Good morning, fellow gardeners. Well, we're going to invite you into our devotion this morning. Uh, we thank you for being with us. Uh, we're going to talk about kidnapped and ransomed. You know, we're going to read out of Mark 10, verse uh, 45. And verse 10, verse 45 says, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. He really gave his life a ransom for everyone, but not everybody chooses him to be their savior. This, even though he is the only way we can escape out of this old sinful world. So anyway, we're going to talk about kidnapped and ransomed. Uh, let's pray a moment before we get into this. Uh, Father in heaven, we come to you at this time and we just want to thank you for what Jesus did. He came to this earth, showed us how we should live, and then died for our sins, that we might have eternal life if we choose him as our personal Savior. And Lord, I do pray that you'll help each and every one of us that's listening out there, that's uh, sitting here in this house, that we truly will accept Jesus as our Savior that we might have eternal life and live with him throughout the ceases age of eternity when he comes back to reclaim his own. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, anyways, kidnapped and ransomed. Barbara, the daughter of a wealthy businessman, was kidnapped and helped for $500,000 ransom. Her abductors took her at gunpoint from a motel room to a distant and lonely place where they had prepared a grave and a special casket for her, complete with food, water, and a battery-operated fan and lights. Now, in spite of her pleas, they buried her alive in that casket. The fan brought fresh air into her casket from uh, through a pipe that extended to the surface of the ground. Can you imagine her feelings as she heard of the dirt being shoveled on top of the casket and then that deathly silence? Well, there she was in that casket underground. One 24-hour passed and no, sign, no sound of rescue. Undoubtedly, she wondered if her, father, if her father would pay that much ransom for her, a half a million dollars. A second 24-hour passed and then a third 24-hour passed. Now, we marvel at her ability to maintain her sanity under such horrible circumstances. I can only imagine what it'd be like in that casket in there one day, two days, three days, and no sounds. Finally, after more than 80 hours, that's more than three days, 80 hours of living death in that casket, she heard shovels scraping frantically at the dirt. Someone opened the lid and the light uh, dazed Barbara. Her rescuers lifted her, the physical, physically and mentally exhausted woman out of the casket, and she fell into the arms of her father who had paid the ransom. That's a wonderful thing to get redeemed after you've been kidnapped like that and put out, put down in the, in the grave. Consider another uh, kidnapping that happened. We're talking about the entire planet is in a very real sense of a giant coffin. Satan, in the Garden of Eden, took Adam and Eve kidnappers, kidnapped. Took our first parents from their garden home. They, with every descendant down through the, <coughs> the centuries, have been helped for ransom. As the centuries have gone by, multiplied billions of additional individual, individuals have been kidnapped. Many of them fortunately died believing in the one that, who would ransom them from the grave. Now that's the one that died before Jesus came to earth. For 4,000 years, they died looking forward to Jesus coming and dying for their sins. It had been promised in the scriptures, and that's what they was hoping for. 
lot of people didn't believe in that, so they died not believing, and they will be burned when Jesus comes back. But those that believed in Jesus is soon coming, the first time, they will be saved. That was back there before Jesus came to this earth. But then he came to this earth as a babe. And you know, he lived, grew up here as an individual, as a human man. He gave us an example how we should live. And then, at the year, age of 33, he died and uh, was put in the grave. They, they, they killed him on the cross, put in the grave. Three days later, he come out of that grave to be raised and to go to his father. And he told his disciples that I go to be with my father that I might send you a, a comforter, a help meet, the Holy Spirit that can be with all people at all times. That's the wonderful thing. He, when Jesus was here, he could just be at one place at one time. He was a human. He took on human form. But then when he went back to heaven and he sent the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can be with us all at the same time. And that's a wonderful thing. Anyway, uh, that one came, uh, that Jesus, that one person we're talking about came and he paid a priceless ransom. He died upon the cross for each one of our sins. He gave his life that we might be set free from the clutches of the great kidnapper, Satan. Not only will we be delivered from death in the resurrection when Jesus comes back, but we can be rescued from the grip of sin right now while we're living upon this earth. We can call upon Jesus through the Holy Spirit to forgive us of our sins and ask God to guide us and direct us as we live upon this earth. We spend time in his Bible. We spend time praying, contemplating the death of Jesus and what he did for us and how wonderful it will be to live with Jesus when he comes back to this earth and claims all these people. He says we'll all see Jesus coming at the same time in the clouds of heaven. Those that have been looking for him, first it says the graves will be open and those that are laying in the graves waiting will rise up into there. And then we which are alive upon this earth shall be raised up into there with them ever to be with the Lord. And the, and the brightness of his coming will slay those that are not looking for him to save them and they will be killed right then. Anyway, we don't want that. We want to be living for Jesus when he comes. Let's spend time in our Bibles. Let's, let's pray to Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us and help other, our other fellow man. We've talked about that in previous devotions, how that it's more important to put the fellow man, your brother, in ahead of you than it is to think of yourself. So we should think of God first, our fellow man, and then ourselves. Paul understood that what it meant to be kidnapped when, it sta when, he, when he stated, it is an astonishing situation, and who can be set free from the prison of this mortal body? But God ransomed him. I thank God there is a way out through Jesus Christ our Lord. That comes to us in Romans 7, 24 and 25. If you appreciate the ransom that Jesus paid to give you the assurance of eternal life and to aid you in gaining victory over the enemy now, why don't you express it to him? Why don't you get down on your knees and pray a little and say, Lord, thank you for uh, ransoming me from, from Satan. Take my sins away from me. Let me live for you now. Will you do that? Okay, let's pray as we close this uh, devotion out. Our loving Father in heaven, we come to you at this time, and Lord, we truly are thanks for you that you did come to this earth and pay the price for our sins. We are all sinners and come short of the glory of God. There's not a single one of us on this earth that's ever lived upon this earth that can be saved uh, as of our own means because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So the only way we can be saved is through your blood, Jesus. We thank you for that. We thank you for coming here and paying that. Then going back to the Father and pleading our cases to your Father in heaven while the Holy Spirit is here helping us if we so choose to have him in our lives. We can have, each one of us can have him in our lives, helping us to pray and study and comprehend about the goodness of God, help our fellow man, 
do good for anyone we can. As we go to Walmart or other stores, push our push them empty baskets in and help that away. Do good for somebody each day. Father, we thank you now and be with us, guide us, and direct us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, fellas, for fellow gardeners for being with us. Uh, we'll be back with you. Uh, please subscribe. It helps us with our children's encouragement. We're getting pictures every day of kids are growing tomatoes and cucumbers and squash, and this does my heart good. So help us, because all of that's money that we're going to make off of YouTube, what little bit we make, we're going to put it back in checks to the children. So help us that way, and we'll see you in a week from now with another devotion, and uh, we look forward to you being there.